you better suck it in. These people gonna think you crying over this cheesecake you looking at. You better stop it. What? What is that? Did I get a bug bite? When did that happen? Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, besties. You know, I thought after finishing Vlogmas that I would be relieved of the pressure that comes with Vlogmas, but I kind of missed it. I was like, I would wake up and I'd be like, I don't have a video to edit. What do I do with my life? <laughs> you know, and so it was kind of sad, but I really enjoyed Vlogmas and I am glad to be back filming a video for you guys. I'm giving you guys my top 10 reads of 2022. I read 113 books. I'm re I'm doing this video on December 30th and I'm in the process of reading like two books right now. So I may have, I may end the year with 115, 116. I don't know. We shall see. My original goal for 2022 was 65 books and I ended up passing that in the summer because I wasn't working and I wasn't in school so I was just reading constantly you know so I was able to surpass that so then I upped my goal to 100. I think for 2023 I'm still gonna have my goal be 65 maybe even 50 because now I'm gonna have to have a full-time job so who knows how I'm gonna be when it comes to reading when I'm like a full-on adult love that for me so this is my top 10 books of this year and it's not going to be in any particular order because honestly my rating system i don't like my rating system i think we should change the five star rating system in general i think we should do like i don't know just something different <laughs> because i overthink rating books so hard and so i couldn't even go based off of like my five star ratings because like there's just random moments when I'm in a generous mood and I'm like, you made me have a fun time, five stars, you know? And then there's moments where it's like, oh, there was that one thing you did that I didn't like, so 4.75, <laughs> as you know? So like, I just, I get so just all over the place with my ratings. So I literally had to go through, hello? That just reminded me I need to change my ringtone because that was the nutcracker. I only ever heard it when my uncle would call me because he's the only person that still talks on the phone. So I couldn't even just go based off of like my five star ratings. I had to like go through everything I've ever read and been like, oh yeah, that's a top 10 for sure. And it would have a 4.75 rating, you know? So it's like, I need to reevaluate my rating system because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So since it's not in any particular order, I'm just going to go based off of like what I read earliest in the year to now. So to start off in March, I read Reminders of Him and this is by far my favorite Colleen Hoover book for sure. I love this book so much. I think it's her most well-written one because um, honestly, if you look at a lot of her books, a lot of them are not very well-written. <laughs> And, you know, no shade to her. Like, she's been in the game for, like, 10-ish years. And, like, she was publishing stuff in, like, 2012. And I don't know if this is just in my brain, but, like, 2012 is, like, the year of, like, we had no standards. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know if it's because I was reading Wattpad at that time. And so I just associate 2012 with, like, Watt Wattpad writing style or what and it's not even true with the publishing world or whatever but like that's just how my brain associates 2012 and so yeah um so no shade of her for sure she's been in the game for so long so it's kind of cool to see her like writing progress this is about a single mom named kenna she had just got released from prison and so she is trying to reconnect with her daughter but the kids grandparents um on the baby daddy side are not allowing her to see the daughter and along the way we meet a guy named ledger who is kind of like an uncle to her daughter and we they, we get to see them like fall in love and all this stuff to what happened why kenna was in prison and all these things and it was just this is one of the only books this year that made me like sob <laughs> i was so distraught 
like almost every other page was just sad you know and <laughs> that may deter you from reading this but I adored it it does have a happy ending but it was just so sad <laughs> it was just so sad and I love sadness I love reading sadness <laughs> I don't know what it is but yeah I don't know it was just so good ledger and scotty are probably the least problematic book boyfriends from uh colleen's shelf um <laughs> and so i love that um there was a girl with downs in this book so the representation for that it was just it was just so good i thought about this book for days the reminder of not to judge people based off their past because you don't even know what that past is because you weren't there so fast forward all the way to july after that yeah i didn't have very good few months <laughs> but after a couple months in july i read ignite me this is the third book in the shatter me series and this one is by far the best one i love this one and defy me which is the fifth one in the series oh my gosh so the shatter me series is following um a girl named juliet whose skin is lethal you touch her you literally die like actually like for real for real you die <laughs> you touch her you die okay and then she meets a guy named adam who touches her and he doesn't die and he's like what <laughs> and then we meet a guy named aaron and he wants to use her as a weapon during a war because this is a dystopian fantasy fiction whatever <laughs> you want to call it but to be honest the books in this series i don't have any nostalgia factor with this series so objectively the series is bad not very well written there's a lot of issues with the series but the third book ignite me has aaron in it so much and it's just so good this one is the good one this one was amazing this one i read in one sitting i laid in that bed that exact bed and i did not move for seven hours and i read this book i read this book on kindle actually and then i bought the paperback <laughs> technically six books and like five novellas or whatever but the last three books and novellas not as good okay so like you could end with this book because originally the author did the first three books and ended the series and then a couple years later she decided to continue the series and add those other three um which i do like that i read those other three but you really could have ended here it is so i don't know i just i don't even know what to say i just had a good old time aaron warner is the funniest man ever i love him he's the other he's the other book husband Aaron Warner love him to death and yeah Aaron Warner is what saves the series and he's in this book the most so it makes sense why this would be my favorite so in August I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo this is a historical fiction it is following a is following Evelyn and her seven husbands. <laughs> Evelyn is an aspiring actress in the like 50s, 60s, I don't even remember what era it was, but she is an aspiring actress and so we're going through her life and like all the questionable things she's willing to do in order to get to her dreams and what she wants. Like it was kind of boring in the beginning, but like I, re I remember I finished this book and then I went to the grocery store and I thought about a sentence towards the end of the book and I almost started crying in the grocery store and I was like you better suck it in these people gonna think you crying over this cheesecake you looking at you better stop it <laughs> any book that I finish reading and like I like just think about it for half a second and I'm like screaming crying throwing up over cheesecake um yeah five stars you get it you did it <laughs> and then also in august i read it happened one summer so this one is more romance and cheesy and everything but it was just i was not expecting to like this book if i'm being completely honest with you and maybe it's because my expectations were so low with this book that i ended up loving it so much but it was just so 
good it was very cheesy if you don't like cheese you ain't gonna like this okay but i just had a fun old time i love brendan brendan is a book husband for real for real okay and i don't have very many book husbands i have a lot of book boyfriends but not very many book husbands so brendan is one of them and i just adored this book so much it was grumpy sunshine it is following our girl piper who is kind of a spoiled rich girl who ends up causing some issues <laughs> and so her stepdad sends her away to uh washington to take care of her biological dad's old shop that he had in washington to like teach her a lesson or whatever and along the way she meets brendan right here this grumpy fisherman and then as we know the romance ensues <laughs> and it's just such a cute little like I just loved it. I don't know. It's so good. I love Brendan. I love Piper. I even, yeah, I love Piper. And she's supposed to be like the spoiled rich girl. I love Piper, you know, and it's just a good old time. I adore this book. It is what it is. And then also in August, I read Weathering Heights for the first time by Emily Bronte. And this wasn't the first classic I've probably ever given like almost five stars i gave it like 4.75 stars i have never in my life read a book where in the beginning i am rooting for someone so hard and then towards like 75 percent in i am hoping for their death <laughs> like i had never experienced that and it was amazing <laughs> you know i've gotten close to it with like and it ends with us with ryle but i never really liked ryle like that anyways like i wasn't rooting for him but with this book i was rooting for him I, we were all rooting for him in the beginning just for yeah <laughs> i gave it 4.75 stars because i the things that happened in this book some of it is so dark where it was like i cannot like live with myself if i gave you five stars <laughs> like it was so serious to me for some reason i was just i would just like i would put the five star on goodreads and i would be like you can't do that <laughs> so i do 4.75 because it is so well written and the plot is so like amazing it's just like like what is going on <laughs> like i don't know i'm like at a loss for words when it comes to this book but it is definitely a top 10 because i will remember it like pretty much for the rest of my life um it was just i don't even like i think what really tripped me up is because it was a classic i just assumed it was like a romance book <laughs> and so it's not <laughs> and so i think because i went in thinking it would be a romance book the utter shock i got from a certain character when they did the switch switcheroo i just i can't come back from that <laughs> and then in october i went into my more like fantasy dark romance era and stuff like that and so i read the mindfuck series and this by far is probably one of the best series i've ever read in my entire life um to be honest with you the series is five books but they're all very short this is um more of a dark romance this is following our main character our miss myers um she is a serial killer she is a serial killer and she's falling in love with a detective go ahead and read it now it's all on kindle unlimited go do it <laughs> now obviously there's a lot of trigger warnings with this series because there's a reason she's a serial killer and it goes very dark into why she is but if those are things you are able to read i highly highly recommend it if you don't read anything else i say in this video please go read that especially since it's on kindle unlimited i literally after finishing it i was like should i reread the series like should i just start again should i just read it again <laughs> like it was just so it was just so good honestly that series is my series or my book of the year i gave pretty much every single book in that series uh 4.5 to 5 stars i give the entire series 5 stars 
it was just so good and after that i read the six of crows duology and i gave the six of crows duology like 4.75 stars i think i gave six of crows and um cricket kingdom that rating just because i wasn't giving that like five star feel that i like to mention or whatever but honestly so this duology is found family like gang wanting to do a heist basically um that's all you need to know <laughs> and it is just so good so i read the shadow and bone trilogy and then i read the duology and it's just crazy to see the like progression and the writing capability the growth that uh bardoga had within those two things and it's like the same universe and stuff it was just so like wow like you really like up your game girl i would say that cricket kingdom was a little too long for me to be honest with you which is probably why i didn't give it five stars and also i got a spoiler for something and it kind of ruined the experience for me a little bit i think if i didn't get that spoiler i would have totally given it five stars but i finally watched the show shadow and bone and the show just made me love the universe even more i think the show helped me like really kind of imagine the world building and everything and i was like oh okay so that's what she was trying to say in the book because honestly the grisha verse is kind of confusing to read at least for me i was like i'm too dumb for this please don't do this to me <laughs> um, but yeah so i think it's because of the show that it made me be like oh my gosh i'm so glad i read this this universe and i still need to read more i need to read king of scars and stuff i love kaz kaz is the love of my life he's a husband he is i love that man with everything in me and then in October, I read Queen of Nothing. This is the third book in the Folk of the Air series, the Cruel Prince series, whatever you want to call it. So the Cruel Prince series is about a cruel prince. What? Giving enemies to lovers. This is a fantasy book, so it's uh, very fey. I never read a book with like fey characters and stuff. I wasn't really into the first book and everyone was like oh the second book is so much better the second book is so much better and i wasn't really into the second book either <laughs> i feel like a whole lot of nothing happened in the middle and so i just wasn't as interested in it but the third one the third one is what got me the third one was so freaking good i think my main thing was i loved jude and cardin the most and they were pretty much what i cared about they didn't really have that much going on in the first book they had more going on in the second book but i just didn't care about the actual plot i just cared about them and there was still a lot of plot happening but in the third book i actually cared about the plot too that was happening around jude and cardin is the thing so yeah i just i don't know i really loved queen of nothing and then after that we get into december i have been reading literally all christmas books only one book in my wrap-up is going to not be a christmas book the christmas carol by charles dickens i didn't realize that the christmas carol is the famous story that we all have seen like adaptations of even in like sit sitcoms let alone movies of like the ghost of christmas past present future mr scrooge like i didn't know that this was that story until my friends were telling me and i was like oh my gosh really i got the book that has the original scrooge in it are you serious <laughs> and everything and so yeah this is just this is just a classic it's the most famous christmas story probably of all time I really liked it and since i read it like literally like three days ago it's still heavy on my mind so maybe that's also what it is <laughs> and then my favorite christmas romance book probably of my entire existence is scrooge and the girls next door i love this christmas romance book i love it so much i read this on kindle unlimited you can read it on kindle unlimited and i ended up buying the paperback version i'm kind of upset that it's so tall but it is what it is um <laughs> i was like i know i'm gonna reread this like every christmas i might reread this in january just to annotate it if i'm being completely honest with you but <laughs> it is what it is okay this book is what the title says grumpy sunshine and their neighbors and she's a single mom 
you love to see it. She's a single mom. He's a professor of anthropology, I think it was. So he knows about the culture. Um, and so it was just so, I don't know. It was just cute. It's cute. It's also a clean romance if you don't like spice. Um, I didn't know that going into it, but I was very honestly happy about it <laughs> so yeah i really enjoy this book it's so cute i have two christmas books on here so it's probably the top 10 because they're heavily on my brain still right now since i read them this month this one i read like three days ago this one i read like two weeks ago so yeah take that as you will but yeah those are my top 10 books of 2022 um out of 113 <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments what are y'all's top 10 books you've read or even just your top book of the year mine would probably be the mindfuck series for sure um but yeah um also let me know down in the comments any like bookish new year's resolutions you guys have i really want to um read more diversely and what i mean by that isn't necessarily like reading more uh poc authors which of course i always want to read poc authors but what i mean by that is i think it's normal for us all to read uh authors that are from the u.s or the uk sometimes even canada but we don't really read very many books that had to get translated in english i want to read more books from authors that are from like nigeria and korea i want to read books where they literally had to translate it into english for us to be able to read it <laughs> like that's what i want to try and read more of so if you have any recommendations comment down below for sure and definitely let me know your new year's bookish resolutions down in the comments also thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe follow me on my socials down below and i will see you guys next time bye